Like, like a boat, that was the only thing I could compare it to. Just, just weren't rocking. Last year, we were sitting on our deck watching as the house came floating by. You can hear it, it's like a, it's like an explosion, or like really loud gunshot. It's like, bam, when the trees hit the water and break up. Juneau, Alaska. Glacier outburst floods have been happening here for over a decade. The first flood that we saw was 2011. No one understood what was happening. A group of us got into a helicopter and we flew up and we saw a uh, suicide basin and you could see evidence that it had recently drained. They're pretty clear that's where the flood had come from. As the smaller suicide glacier recedes away from the large Mendenhall Glacier, it leaves behind a large basin water from rain and glacial melting accumulates in this basin, trapped between the Mendenhall Glacier and the mountain. When the water reaches a certain level, it builds up enough pressure to force its way underneath the Mendenhall Glacier, draining into the Mendenhall Lake and flowing into the Mendenhall River. This flow is up to 100 times the normal amount of water flowing from Mendenhall Lake into Mendenhall River. The river overflows its banks, flooding neighborhoods as it winds its way through the Mendenhall Valley. There's um, thousands of houses in the Mendenhall Valley. This year, 300 houses flooded. The potential, if these floods get bigger, is thousands of houses flooding in the Mendenhall Valley. This is the entire uh, bedroom community of Juneau. This isn't the first time a river flooding its banks has devastated an Alaskan city. Downtown, by the next day, by Tuesday, the water was about four feet deep or so in the streets right behind us. Decades ago, in 1967, the Chena River overwhelmed the city of Fairbanks so badly that President Johnson declared it a national disaster area. The devastating scenes Cars stranded or driving through floodwaters, residents wading through knee-deep water, and boats navigating the streets bear a striking resemblance to the flooding experienced by Juneau residents in recent years. So, what has kept Fairbanks from experiencing another flood of that magnitude? After the 1967 disaster, Congress passed the Flood Control Act of 1968. So after the 1967 flood, which was a real disaster, the present Chena Lakes flood project was designed and put into motion for construction. This project involved the construction of a dam capable of releasing water through its gates to regulate the flow. It also involved building a levee preventing the kind of uncontrolled release of water that is currently happening with the Mendenhall River. Since its completion, the Chena River and Lakes Flood Control Project has been used at least 28 times to prevent the Chena and Tanana Rivers from flooding Fairbanks. Ed Neal is a former hydrologist and surface water specialist for the USGS Alaska Science Center and the current principal scientist for Alaska Hydroscience. He says that a similar approach would be the best solution for the Mendenhall Valley. The most viable option that would probably protect the valley into the future would be to construct some sort of flood retention basin here that backs up the level of the lake, say an additional 10 to 12 feet, to knock the flow levels down. Methods that are focused more at the level of the lake have the added utility of not just dealing with the outburst flood that we see now, but potentially also dealing with other outburst flood hazards that might emerge up glacier as the Mendenhall Glacier continues to recede. Although the functionality would be similar, 
The scale of a flood control project at Mendenhall Lake would be less than a quarter of the size of the Chena River and Lakes flood control project. Essentially what, what you would have to do is, is create a, a low dam across the outlet of the lake and control the amount of water that leaves the lake. Uh, you know, if, so as the lake fills, you're, let, you're releasing water, but you're releasing less than 32,000 CFS. The previous computations for a 100-year flood on the Mendenhall River before these outburst floods were, were, was about 17,000 CFS. So say you could devise a flood control structure that limited the out the outflow of the lake to 17,000 CFS. As it's, you're releasing 17,000 CFS, what would happen is the lake level would come up like probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, seven to nine, 10 feet. And then you would just, for the next day, would, the river would flow at 17,000 CFS, and then the water would recede and the lake would be right back to the same level it was. That would be an ideal situation. And that would, that would provide the greatest protection from flooding. But with these glacial outburst floods occurring every year, beginning work on the solution is of the utmost importance. And what I would do is I would do the geotechnical work. I would do the feasibility studies. You don't need permits for those. They could be done by now, and they haven't been. And I just don't really understand that. Take me down to the river where the peace won't run dry. Gather round at the river where my soul comes to life and I.